All right, today on this old trailer, what we're going to do is install electric brakes. Right now, this trailer does not have any brakes on it whatsoever, so it has two drag axles. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and take off the rear wheels, and then we'll go ahead and take off the hubs. At this point, we'll take off the dust cap on our axle, and basically what you want to do is on this particular unit, we have an easy lube cap. So it fit kind of tight. What is a good idea is go ahead and rotate the hub and lightly strike it and then that helps back it off where you can get a screwdriver behind the flange and then pry it off. All right, let's wipe off the excess grease on the end of a spindle here and we'll get to the tang washer and we'll release it so we can back off the castle nut. All right, got cleaned up a little bit. Now, right here, this is a tab I was talking about that's for a tang washer. Take this, push it down flat to the flat spot on the spindle and then you can take the castle nut off. All right, at this point, we can go ahead and just remove the entire hub assembly. All right, now we go ahead and clean up the spindle so we have a nice clean area to work with, and then we'll start reassembly. All right, now we got everything out of the way, we can see what's going on. What's gonna happen is our backing plate is gonna bolt on to the square flange right here with the four holes. Now, if your axle doesn't have that, what's gonna, what you need to do is get one of these flanges and have it welded onto your axle. All right, one thing we need to prepare the backing plate We'll go ahead and pull the wires up and out of the way, and then we'll route them through the plastic holder that'll keep them safe and out of the way so they don't get jammed up between the flange and the backing plate itself. Then we we'll go ahead and install it on our flange. And what, two things we're going to remember is that the magnet always is points towards, just towards the ground. And then if you can see the arm that the magnet's connected to, that bow always faces forward. And then on the back side, we'll go ahead and install the lock washers and nuts pull everything into place. Okay, let's go ahead and get our hub ready. We'll take a finger full of grease and start off by putting it in the race. Okay, and then next we'll go ahead and drop a bearing into the packer. You can do this by hand or use a device like we're using here. Pack the bearing full of grease. And then what'll happen next, we'll go ahead and drop the bearing inside there and then we'll install the seal. And in this instance, we actually have an easy loop spindle so when we're done with this, we can actually add more grease. Basically, add as much grease as you can to the inside of a hub if you don't have an easy lube spindle, and then just pack it as, and then pack it as normal. Okay. All right, at this point here, you can actually use a special tool that distributes the, the force of installing it. Most people don't have this at home, so we're just gonna use a regular mallet and just lightly tap it in a circle till we get it even all the way around. You can also tell by the tone, that you have it all the way in there and flat. Okay, now we'll go ahead and flip it over and do, go ahead and do the same thing to the races and bearing. If that's settled, we'll just put a thin film of grease on the spindle. We'll go ahead and reinstall the hub. So next we'll go ahead and just add the flat washer, then the tang washer, then the nut. When we tighten down the nut, what we're going to do is run it up as far as we can with a tool, back it on and off a few times, make sure the hub is fully seated, and then we'll go ahead and then tighten up to the nut till it stops, and then we'll use whatever, whatever tab lines up with the nearest notch in the castle nut. And whichever tab you use or notch, what you want to do is you don't want to tighten it to use the next one, you want to back it off to use the nearest one. That way you don't over tighten the bearings and it'll get extra pressure on them and it'll get hot and wear out faster. And once we have that resolved, we'll go ahead and push up the tab back into place. All right, next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and adjust the brakes. And how we're gonna do that is basically we're gonna tighten up the brakes while rotating the hub until they just stop. When you can't rotate the hub by hand anymore, then we'll go ahead and back it off 10 clicks and then check to see how much drag we have. The end result is that we should have very slight drag on the brakes on the hub. Now, a 10 click rule gets you pretty close to where you need to be. You may have to adjust it in or out depending on the, how much drag you get. All right, we'll go ahead and replace the caps on the back side of the backing plate. Then we'll go back over to the other, si the other side of the axle and repeat the same process. All right, next step will be go ahead and put on the dust caps back on the end of the hubs, and we'll just tap them into place. There's a variety of different methods 
that you can do that with. We actually used a two inch conduit coupling. That actually works great on these type of dust caps. Okay, we finished our installation of the backing plates and the hubs. The next time on this old trailer, we'll start next on the wiring components.